Hey, what's up everyone? I am Torvald and today I'm going to be explaining to you how to take on specific spawns in the Abyss. Um, usually my videos cover specific ships and fittings and how to handle those. Um, I figured I've been, I've been asked a lot about how to handle specific situations. So I thought I'd try this video out as a test to see if, uh, if it helps you all out. Um, in the Abyss there are specific rooms that people have trouble with more often. Um, so here we go. The first one I'm going over is Charybdis Tyrannos. Uh, this is one that claims many capsuleers. Um, for simplicity, we're going to call Charybdis Karen. Uh, make this easier on me. But uh, this is one where people really struggle with because Karen has a giant cannon that does a lot of damage. And uh, whenever you come into this into a room with Karen, you have a... Um, a good 30 to 60 kilometer distance you have to travel along with cruisers. Um, so a tactic to handle Karen. Basically, what I do when I first get into a room is I automatically orbit at 30 kilometers. The gate, the uh, the bioadaptive cache, something. Just to get moving. Just to get that initial movement going. And uh, while I'm doing that, you're just kind of assessing the cruisers. Um, while Karen is the biggest threat, the cruisers, you got to take out specific ones depending on what your fit is and how um, how you operate. Um, in this specific video, um, with this fit, my biggest threat was the Null Chargers because they nude out. Um, so basically, what you're going to be doing, depending on your ship, taking out the biggest threat while making your way to Caribbean's Tyrannos, kind of at an angle. So you're not going to fly directly at her. Um... You want to fly kind of at her at an angle, that way you can mitigate some of the damage. Um, if you fly directly at her, hopefully you've got dang good tank that can handle it. Um, but yeah, fly at her at kind of an angle in en route to her, unless you have the ability to start getting damage to her or there's no dangerous cruisers. Um, you want to start knocking out whatever your biggest threat is. So um, typically it's null chargers. Um, or dissipators, whatever variation of cruisers come with her. Typically, um, you'll take out whatever newts. Um, as you can see, I'm taking out the null chargers. And then I am afterburner fit in this specific scenario, so I'm going to go after the entanglers. Um, null warpers really don't matter to me. They only matter if you have a micro warp drive and you need that. Um, and you got to kind of pick and choose based off your own experience and your own situation what you're going to focus on whether entanglers or uh null warpers um once it comes down to it but once you get within range of karen things get pretty easy from here um she does move quite fast and she is going to be burning away from you she's going to try and get away from you a lot of times as you see here she gets right on the border and hangs out there um so it's kind of a it's a dangerous um, dangerous like distance to go burning towards her. But as long as you're going that little um, you know not straight at her, but that angle. And another thing to take into consideration, um, as you can see here, the blue cloud, uh, blue cloud, and then tracking pylons. Those are actually dangerous um, for Caribbean Tyrannos. So. In your path, in route to Caribbean Tyrannos, if you notice there is a blue cloud, you need to be aware of that. Um, if you get in that blue cloud, your signature radius blooms and she can hit you pretty easily. So make sure in your path there's not a blue cloud. And then if she is on a tracking pylon, be paying attention to that. There's not much you can do about that. Um, that's one of those things where you just you put some heat on your tank, put some heat on your prop mod get closer to her but once you get within range um once you get within range she's not much of a uh, of a threat it's just a matter of taking her down in gamma sites she does have that hyped up shield uh, bonus so you got to be you know you have to apply more damage to her to be able to kill her um you know firestorm's armor doesn't really matter she is shield tank but um that's basically the gist of it. Just get under her guns um, and then get that orbit on her. She hits for a lot. Just imagine one giant gun strapped on the front end of that. And it, it's not easy to hit you, but if it does, it hurts. So you just want to get under that giant gun um, to avoid that damage. And then while you're doing that, you also want to be... Uh, while you're maneuvering under those guns, you want to take out whatever cruisers are most um, dangerous to your ship. 
Um, Gerbidus Tyrannos, you know, you can see that I moved pretty slowly, so time actually was kind of an issue here. Um, but I did complete it in under six minutes. Um, use heat. Heat's important. Um, heating your tank if you have to burn straight at her. Heating your prop mod to get that, you know, to get that distance faster. But uh, that's how I deal with Gerbidus Tyrannos. It's, it's basically the gist of it. Um, a lot of people have issues with her. Um, yeah, definitely focus on whatever cruisers are most imp are most dangerous to your fit um, while you're going that distance to get under her guns and then get under her guns. If you got a web, um, that helps a lot because she does move quite fast for a battleship. So uh, web her, but as long as you can orbit her and keep a you know keep that distance. If you're going at least double her speed, that way you can you know keep that orbit. But that is that is Caribidus Tyrannos, um, a big killer in the abyss. But that's how I handle that, and that's some uh, things you can do to uh, to take that on. Um, after this, another room, and this one actually isn't hard, but it's one I'd figure I'd show y'all. Lashak rooms. Um, Lashaks are actually, whenever I come up against Lashaks, they are the easiest rooms. They are the quickest, in my opinion. Um, initially, burn straight at them. Um, you don't really need to worry about mitigating the damage by flying at an off angle. Just burn straight at them. Um, I actually don't do it here, but you should probably overheat your prop mod just to get under them. Um, starving Lashak is a huge, huge pain. Um... You, you want to bring down the Starving Lashak first, because the amount that that thing nudes out for is a lot. So, your number one priority, burning at them as quickly as possible, killing Starving Lashak. Um, that is your number one goal. Your cap will suffer greatly. Ignore them. This is my first time flying this fit. Ignore, uh, I, <laughs> I was a little rusty when I was flying this and recording this. Um... But kill the stone with the shack. You can see how easily they die. Now in Firestorms, these uh, Lashak rooms are a little bit more tough because they got hyped up armor. But same, just kill the kill Starvings. Kill them as quickly as possible. If you have the ability to apply distance uh, damage from distance, stay 50 kilometers away from them. From them. Um, that way you don't get those newts on you. Stay 50 kilometers away until you get those renewing or those uh, starving Lashaks killed. Um, after starving Lashax, renewing Lashax. These guys do the most amount of reps, um, so they are most important to kill after the starvings. Um, blinding Lashax, they can be a pain because they kind of starburst and they reduce your targeting range. Um, so, kind of a pain, and then striking Lashax, you know, it, it just depends. If you're closer to the blinding, can kill him, kill the blinding. But, um, you know, it's kind of situational but yeah most important kill that starving lashak first kill them first if you can kill them from distance do it if you have to get close um hopefully your cap can handle it um overheating stuff overheating your dps very, um can help out a lot just to get that starving down they always start with this low health um yeah they always start as if they were just you know in a battle so you know you've got that going for you um yeah, once you get under their guns, they, you know, obviously, Triglavian weapons, they do build up damage. Um, but you can get under their guns, and they will miss you. Even if they miss, their damage still ramps up. But, um, they'll miss you if you get under their guns, just like any other battleship. So, you know, if there's not too many Starving Lashaks, there's an option right there. Um, if there are a lot of Starving Lashaks, if you get three or four, um, and you don't have the ability to attack them from range it's just kind of one of those things where you gotta you gotta you gotta go in and just hope it works um and hope your cap holds up long enough to get enough damage on them to kill them um i've got a little bit of range on this ship that i'm in but sometimes you just don't have that range uh, but that's little shock rooms they're pretty easy as long as starvings don't mess you up too bad um normally you can kill them before their damage gets too dangerous um and like i said these are always quick rooms for me I and mean, you're talking two three minutes to kill all these lashaks get the loot and get out it's kind of a nice little uh saving room but i figured i'd show you all that just to you know just in case you ever had trouble with that um 
But yeah, it should be an easy room for you. Uh, the next room, and you're actually going to be a little, you know, maybe thinking to of why you showed me this. You, you know, these are, these are not a problem. But these little rooms, uh, these small little frigate drone type rooms, they're actually harder than you would think, and they're actually one people kind of struggle with. I know I've struggled with them before because these little guys hit for a lot more than they let out. Um, but in this specific scenario, I'm flying the um, the Munin, and you know, with with any kind of projectile weapon, um, these little guys are, you know, kind of scary because you have to apply damage to them. Or if you're using heavy assault missiles, application is probably your biggest issue here. And granted, these guys do hit for quite a bit. Um, their damage, especially when you have so many of them, is really painful. But the tactic with these, and, you know, it sucks because this is completely situational, but you are relying on deviant suppressors or multi-body tracking pylons or blue clouds. You are, those are, um, you know, there's a chance you don't get any of those. But whenever I run into these, I rely heavily on all of those. Um, the tracking pylons increase your tracking speed, making, uh, giving you the ability to apply damage to these guys. Um, the deviant suppressor does damage to these guys, which, you know, the... If you just sit on a deviant suppressor, it'll kill them for you. You just gotta chill on it. Um, short range deviant suppressor does a lot more damage than the um, the medium range, so keep that in mind. If you have the option between the two of them, go for the short range. Um, if you are a missile boat, that short range suppressor does more damage to your missiles, so you probably won't apply it all with your missiles. But um, the suppressors do a lot of damage to these guys. Um, in this specific scenario. I go for the tracking pylon, and you can see that I'm able to kill these guys with ease. I'm not missing too many shots. Damage is applying, and life is good. Um, if you don't have a tracking pylon or a deviant suppressor, hopefully you've got a blue cloud, and you can get to it and apply damage. Um, the blue cloud boosts the signature radius, as I talked about before in the Karen room. Uh, blue cloud boosts signature radius, and that'll let you apply damage to these guys a lot easier. Um, if you don't have any of that stuff, then, I mean, you're, you know, obviously you should be good, but it's going to be a little, it's going to take a little bit more time. Um, basically just make it as easy as possible to hit them, you know, fly in a path directly away, uh, directly to, or directly away from them to, um, to better, to better apply damage with any, you know, without any outside help from the signature radius or the tracking pylon. Um, and just hope, you know, hope you got enough application to be able to kill them without any help. Um, obviously you should be fine. Uh, one thing to note, fog casters, they do, um, tracking disrupt and they, um, guidance disruption. So fog casters, if you are having application issues, kill the fog casters, um, focus on them. They will hurt your application no matter what you're flying. So if you are already struggling with application, focus on those guys. Um, usually, or faction ammo is usually better application and better tracking than Tech 2 counterparts. So one thing to keep in mind when you're flying these sites is yes, Tech 2 ammo has better DPS. But in scenarios like this, you need better tracking. Um, so or you need better application with your missiles, better tracking with your projectile ammo. or um, So usually you'll use faction ammo. Uh, depending on what you're flying, you'll use faction ammo and you come up against these. But yeah, I just wanted to show you this one because I feel like this is one, you know, this is one people might not know too much about um, and might have some trouble with. But hopefully this video helped. Um, this is an idea I came up with recently when people ask, you know, because I see questions about, like, specific rooms and how to handle them. So I'm going to do this for hopefully every room. Um, I'm going to get footage of all the, you know, all the spawns. Um, but hopefully this has helped. If you like this, let me know. I want to, you know, if I need to keep doing these, I totally will. I, I'm probably going to continue. So hopefully they help you. Um, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Thanks for all the support. And hopefully I'll get another one of these coming. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the abyss.